Welcome to the abstract and outline assignment. This is part of your term project paper and other assignment tasks. So I'm going to share the screen with you. And so here we have the abstract and outline assignment. I will upload these uh, or this video here when I'm done. There are two files associated with this. I have already downloaded them. You need to download and read them yourself. The idea is that you've already done your project selection. Some of you have not. Please check in the grades to date file. And if you have a red or yellow highlighting to your score for your, your uh, at project selection, contact me immediately. We need to make sure your project selection is set before we can move on to step two, which is the abstract and outline. And once we've done this, the idea is your paper should be almost done except for hanging the flesh on the bones, so to speak. We're going to finish writing the paper, but once it's organized, everything should be relatively straightforward and easy. What I recommend at this point is you have a minimum of three good references that provide the meat of your paper that you are going to tell, the story you're going to tell. And go through them and organize all of the pieces of information, you know, take notes, on all the pieces of information. I'm not a big fan of copy paste, copy paste out of papers because then you don't actually learn. You learn by writing. And there's too much temptation to copy and paste something and then just kind of change a few words to make it your own. That's not writing, that's organizing information. And if all you have to do is store some notes for your personal use, it's okay to copy and paste. If you're writing a paper, you need to write in your own words from the very beginning, including taking notes. And once you've taken your notes, as long as you do it in some way that you know where, where it came from, what paper, what page number, everything you need to know about that, you know where all these pieces of information came, now you can put it together, kind of like shuffling a deck of cards together in an organized way to tell your story. That's what this outline is all about. So let me first go to the uh, outline assignment. Um, first, like I said, you're going to verify that you have some good references, at least three, preferably five at this point. You're going to create a file with your name, date, and ABT 96 in the upper right hand corner, single space. Then you're going to write a descriptive title, which you should already have. But if you're not completely happy, or I wasn't completely happy with your title that you used in your project selection, now's the time to fix it. I want that title to be bold and centered. Don't underline it. Um, then you write an abstract. And what the heck is an abstract? An abstract is an overall summary of your paper. In normal science writing, the abstract is the absolute very last thing you do. Your paper is done. And you know everything that you did, everything you read, everything you concluded, all of the steps you took, it's all done. And now you're going to summarize it. It's not a conclusion. It's everything. And I like to describe an abstract as the elevator speech. You meet your boss uh, the day after you finish writing a paper and your boss uh, catches you in the lobby of the office building and you have to go up to the fifth floor riding the elevator with your boss. And your boss asks you as you step onto the elevator, so I hear you did this paper, tell me about it. You're not going to just tell him the conclusions. You have to give him context. You've got to give him or her the, the whole thing. What are you going to say that completely encapsulates your paper in a short 
a paragraph or two as possible because you have virtually no time to do that. Shoot. Please ignore. Call from Southern PA. Hate robocalls. That was definitely not something I wanted to hear. Anyway, back to this. That is an abstract. Why do you write it at the very end? Because you can't tell everything that is in the paper until you're done writing the paper. You can't summarize it unless you know everything that is there. But it's always a good idea to do a rough draft of an outline, or excuse me, an abstract, I'm sorry, a rough draft of an abstract early on, especially if you are new to science writing. Why? An abstract keeps you in, in focus. Students have a tendency to get off topic. They want to tell everything that they read in all of these papers that are in their citation. And that's not your point. You are telling your story and just your story. And if a, there's a piece of information, a whole bunch of the paper that you're reading that is not part of your story, don't cite it. Don't write about it. You just cite the pieces of information that are relevant. Let me give you a brief story, uh, an idea. Let's say you're talking about um, cultural practices to reduce downy mildew in lettuce. And your story is about cultural practices to reduce downy mildew. Fine, great topic. But you happened to run across a paper that talks about a chemical for treating downy mildew, not what you're doing, chemical controls. But you read that this is a, the most widely used chemical for control of downy mildew and lettuce. And it ha it's effective in 85% of the cases. Okay. What about the other 15? You might just cite that one line and say, there are chemical controls for downy mildew, but according to such and such, the most popular one is still only 85% effective. And then you cite it. And then you say, for that reason and more, it's important to use good cultural practices to reduce the pressure. Again, I just made that up, but that's the idea. You might have one line out of a paper that you're citing that's important to your story. You do not write a summary of a paper followed by a summary of the next paper followed by a summary of the next paper. That is a series of mini book reports. And that is a bad science paper. You're telling one story. And if you need help on that, that's what the Panther Learning Lab is for. I can help you. Sarah Infante, the tutor, is there to help as well. And so I want you to write an abstract so you keep on target. What is my story? What am I telling? And it helps you avoid getting off on sidetracks of things that are not part of your story. So page one, the title page, name, date, ABT 96 in the upper right hand corner, a good solid descriptive title and your abstract. And then you go to the top of the next page. And to get to the top of the next page, you don't go enter, 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 enter until you get to the top of the next page. In Microsoft Word, you just hold down the control key and hit enter once. And that will insert a page break immediately taking you to the top of the next page. I can't say what it is for what word processors you're using, but a page break is an easy thing to add in any word processor. Just look it up. So on page two, you're going to create a page long outline. You should fill page two with your outline, including in text citations. Um, now you're going to have a bibliography or references, or in the case of MLA, it's called a works cited. We've already talked about that, but MLA is what I'm saying to mostly use. I'm, I'm a fan of CSE, Council of Science Editors, but MLA is what's most common at Hartnell. APA is probably the second most. If you want to use APA, 
fine, just let me know. Um, but that'll be page three with your references. Plus I have some hints. Um, please find your articles. You should already have articles. You should have already read, at least roughly read through the articles, read them again. Um, there is something in Microsoft Word, the outline function. All I have to do is start typing something in Microsoft Word with a number and I have an outline. So if I just type the number one and hit space, production, um, body, conclusions, I just have a numbered list, but now for the introduction, I need to say something. I just hit the tab and it will demote that line. What was number two now becomes a demoted A underneath number one. All I did was hit the tab key when I was at the beginning of the line. So outline functions, easy to work with, play around with it. You have to be at the beginning of a new line in order to do the outline function. If you don't start with an outline, you can always go into the uh, numbered list and outline lists um, up here um, in terms of how you can set it up as well. There are different ways to organize or do this. All right. The next document. is the outline sample. And so I have here, um, we've already done the project selection. I've already talked about that. Please read this entire thing. An abstract, I've already described that. Again, please read this, but I did describe it. And then an outline is a way for you to organize your story. And it should be something easy. Introduction, conclusions, and then your story in between. And you should be able to tell your story in three or four parts. And I'll give you an example of that in just a moment. Um, so you're gonna create your outline. I've showed you how to use outlining. You're gonna have your main points. And then please read these uh, bulleted lists on organizing your assignment here. And then finally, I have a reminder, the tab key shift tab promotes. If I was in A and I wanted to go back up a level in my outline to the number two, I would just do shift tab. As long as the cursor is at the very beginning of that line next to the number, it will demote or promote depending on if you hit tab or shift tab. So here's an example of an outline. One of my former students in my dreams, um, and a story that is science related, but I totally made it up. Uh, and even though it's science related, um, it is gonna have to take a break. This one I do have to get. 